I've been always, always very entrepreneurial. I, lo I love to build things. Uh, actually, at age 11, that's when I started my first business. I was basically buying some things in, in, in Germany and selling them in France. And it worked actually quite well, at least for, for my age. I was very proud it worked out and made me a bit of pocket money. But the important lesson there is it really helped me uh, to, to understand the kind of the basics of the of the of entrepreneurship and the basics of business and really help me get confident in, in building on that skill. And actually it's a skill that I'm still using or I'm using today. Good afternoon everybody. I am very happy to welcome uh, Mr. Philip M, graduate from uh, the, uh, the um, classes <laughs> 2014. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy to uh, to see uh, him with him, and uh, I'm sure that uh, he has very interesting things uh, to share with uh, with you. So you can let go, Philippe, and uh, again thank you for your time. Thanks, Vanessa. And uh, Philippe, we have made some presentation of uh, this. Uh, parkour and everything and after you can ask questions uh, in the chat in French or in English whatever you want and I will translate uh, for Philip. Philip you can start. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks for inviting. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be back. I, I feel like virtually in Villejuif actually with, with the offices behind and I yeah, would have loved to be also in Villejuif but maybe will be for next time when when COVID will be over. Um, yeah, so I think for, first I want to say why why I'm, I'm here. Um, first, I will just try to share my story from coming to Cybertech and, and going through and, and some of the lessons uh, lessons I had. Uh, I think I've, I've always really appreciated when, when speaker came or came back and, and learning from alumni. And I think it, it's a way for me to, to give back and hopefully it's, it's useful for you. Uh, for you guys. So yeah, I will talk now like just 20, 30 minutes first. And as I get said, then we have at least 30 minutes for, for questions. Just don't be shy. Uh, there's no, no stupid question. Let's just make the best time out of, or let's make the best out of our time. And you can just ask in the chat, wherever, English, French, German, as you like. Um, so yeah, as, as, uh, as Vanessa said, yeah, I'm I'm graduated from Subbiotech or Promo 2014, uh, if I if I remember well. Um, and after after graduating, I founded La Biotech, which is now the largest digital media platform for the biotech industry, so kind of a news website. Um, and now I'm entrepreneur in residence at Molecular Partners, which is a, a Swiss biotech uh, biotech company, one of the uh, nice ones in in Europe. But I'm actually based in in Berlin. Um, and to to start with, um, I want to go, go back on what what led me to uh, to to Subiotic actually. Um, to go to the really beginning, I'm born half French, half German. I uh, grew up in in the, in the Parisian uh, suburbs actually, with with two siblings and, and some pets, including Fasme, uh, which my mom loved for. But I, I've never really understood why. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, I, and at age uh, five, uh, that's when I started and I discovered biology. Uh, my dad was a microbiome researcher at, at INRA, INRA in, in Jouy, actually. Uh, and he told me about, about bacteria uh, since basically uh, I'm five. Honestly, I didn't understand everything, but still fascinated me uh, how, how just things work, how things assemble together. Uh, and now definitely how, how powerful biotech is from curing cancer to fueling for biofuels to feeding feeding the world um, and at the end this this really uh, drag really developed this this passion for for bio or biotech uh, and still have it today and one of the less the lesson here is is really finding what you love and what you're passionate about uh, is really really important for your studies for after your studies um, and I feel very lucky to have had to discover it really early on. Um, and then one, one thing from at, always, always very entrepreneurial. I, lo I love to build things. Uh, actually, at 
age 11, that's when I started my first business, what well, not really a business, but was kind of a gig. I was basically buying some things in, in, in Germany and selling them in France, it's kind of, if you know, the details the, the papers. Um, so I, I, was, I was basically selling that at school. Um, and it worked actually quite well, at least for, for my age. Um, and um, I was very proud it worked out and made me a bit of pocket money. Uh, but the important lesson there is it really helped me uh, to, to understand the kind of the basics of the of the of entrepreneurship and the basics of business and really helped me kind of get confident in, in building on that skill. And actually it's a skill that I'm still using or I'm using today and I used a lot for Labiotech as well. Uh, and for the three, four other business that I started before entering Subiotech. Um, and the last the last way that happened before Subiotech is at school, I've never been good at school. Uh, I've been basically almost failing every year until the back, uh, 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 my back, I almost didn't get my back, I think 10.5 or something. Um, but somehow I was very interested in biology and I was pretty good in biology, actually it's one of the only topics I was pretty good. Um, and I love to build things in engineering. And so when I thought about what do I want to do after the back, I, I heard about the biotech or about biotech in general, and I was like, really intrigued me. And somehow I felt like, okay, that that could be that could be the, the good thing. Uh, that could be the good thing for me. Um, I visited the school. I remember, and I thought, okay, that sounds sounds good. Uh, from from the description of the of the program, sounded good. Uh, and also, to be honest with you. I didn't have that many other options as my grades were not that good. Uh, and if I want to go to engineering school, at least in France, I didn't have that many options and Subatec was definitely my best option. Um, and here's a lesson I'm still very grateful for, uh, for Subatec and Vanessa and the, and the whole team for really giving a chance to people who maybe don't fit that well into the system or who don't have the best grades, but who with hard work can prove that they can, they can go through it and that they can actually achieve it. And that's that's something that you see actually in, in quite a few entrepreneurs and other, other people. I mean, school is not made for everyone and, and doesn't necessarily uh, measure how, how smart or how ambitious and how how hardworking you are, but it, it also a lot how you fit into the system and and listen and uh, and do things that you're not necessarily agree with. And this I, I didn't really uh, understand, but... Uh, so yeah, I'm very grateful for that. And I think overall, the whole lesson is also like, even if you don't fit, uh, somehow if you continue and you push, there is always, there's always a way to get there and there's always someone who will be there to help as well. Uh, whether it's here in my case, to biotech, but I already also had teachers who were very supportive. And at the end also mentors who were very supportive um, down the line. So yeah, so then, I now brings me to, I've been accepted. I was in, and then was the first day of, of, of Subitec. Actually, it was not the first day in class, it was the first day of the pre rattrapage if I remember, the two, the two weeks. Um, and here, that leads me to how was Subitec. Uh, at first, it was very challenging, actually. Um, I remember the, the first day of pre rattrapage was in biology class, um, and I was sitting there, and a lot of people who were there uh, had been first year of medicine or had, had done something before. I was fresh out of high school. Um, and I remember the teacher asking, okay, he was talking about the energy in the cell and asking, okay, what's, what's the molecule, please? Everyone on curl gives the name and everyone saying ATP. And I was like, okay, I never heard of that. Uh, it will be tough. But uh, at the end, it was, it was quite tough. Uh, I remember the first year I finished with seven or some, something like this. Uh, but at some, but still, uh, with perseverance, I, f I felt it was right. I liked, I liked it. Uh, it was hard, but uh, perseverance, perseverance pays off. There's a, a good saying I like a lot is easy choices, hard life, hard choices, easy life. And it's something that I still apply today. Uh, when you have a challenge, if it fits into a bigger sense, it will you will create a lot of value and also makes it easier down the line. Um, the the second thing about it was about about curiosity. 
Uh, and, and Vanessa, actually, I remember your, your opening speech that was after the prayer trappage, uh, welcoming everyone. And you ended up on saying, uh, be curious, read a lot. And, and I took it yeah, a bit seriously, but I, I started reading a lot. And, it's, uh, and at the end, that's where the frustration came from to build the first business and to build a uh, We were trying to read and reading a lot of things and things were like very outdated, not well done, or still like yeah, still on, on paper. And we thought, okay, we could maybe do something uh, a bit better or at least try. Uh, and that's where, where it came from. And I think today, uh, still, the, the reading part is very important. Curiosity in general is, is something that is super important, um, especially as, as students. Um, there's so much, so much you can learn. Just be, be extremely curious. Explore, explore more, not only the classes, what's outside. Um, and here, one actionable advice about reading or about curiosity is, uh, there's a lot of resources out, um, out there and free resources. So first you can subscribe to La Biotech, it's still online, you have a newsletter uh, or social media, wherever you want to follow it. You can go on YouTube, you have amazing uh, biotech conferences or channels, check the channel iBiology. So they explain you from, from top um, researchers or top professors who explain you their research. Um, yeah, a lot of things you can do and this will be uh, bringing you a lot of value down the line, even to find internships, to find a job, and then in, in your career. Um, the, third, the third thing was about going out. Um, and this was actually, I remember that T Thierry said that in, in the first year of master's, saying, okay, so biotech will bring you 50% of the value, or will give you 50% of the knowledge. The other 50%, you need to uh, go out to find it. And, and I think it's definitely true. Um, the, the, the classes and the projects are, are great, but then what you do outside is also as important. And so um, I remember trying to, uh, like going to a first networking event that was in, uh, that was actually was at the end of, of uh, the third year. Um, and we're there, um, I think was it the, um, uh, was in, uh, in Romainville at the Biocitech. And there's a conference with 100 professionals, and I was standing there in the corner, didn't know what to say. It was actually for, for, for a project, wanted to talk to one person. And at the, end, at the end of the day, I managed to talk to him, get his business card, and I was like, wow, I was super proud, and managed to do that. And at the end, doing more and more, and networking, and, and connecting to people outside. And that is also just super important. Um, take, take ownership, go out, go out meet people uh, and that on the actionable level, uh, especially for those, I think some of them are in the fourth year right now, try to go to a networking event, uh, especially right now it's all virtual. So you can just connect a meetup, an event, uh, just go there, see what, it, what, it's, what it's about, try to talk to a few people or go on LinkedIn, talk to people, talk to people at other engineering schools. It just broadens a lot your, your horizon and gives you a lot of context and also generates a lot of opportunity down the, down the line. Uh, typically, the, the, the role I'm in right now, it's a, a CEO that I met through Labiotech three years ago and kept in touch. And that's why, well, main reason that now I'm, I'm working here as well. Um, so the, the, the fourth and part of the story, then it's, it's about English. Um, I think it's, uh, so I was never really good in English. My, my mom was actually English teacher and German teacher, but somehow I was, I was not that good. I've never been good at languages. Um, and, and somehow I've never understood how you can learn a language by learning lists of vocabulary, as it's, as it's uh, usually practiced in school and sometimes as sabbatic as well. And I always thought, okay, to learn, to learn English or language, you need to go in a, in a country and, and speak it, if possible, a native country. And so uh, actually in the fifth, fifth year of Cybertech, I went to, to Boston for actually six months plus the six months of internship. And that's where I really learned uh, English. And uh, I think it's just super important. Uh, it's, it's, um, yeah, it, it just unlocks a lot of things. And I think 
everyone can like can be fluent like really fluent and and what I mean by really fluent is not just a TOEIC or a TOEFL is like can you talk one hour with someone and not being tired or not like and that it doesn't cost you more energy than in your native native language. And I remember this took me three months in Boston. After three months, I was talking one hour in an interview, and it doesn't really matter if I did it in French or English. And I think that's something that is reachable. Then reaching native level and fixing your accent and everything, this is like a lot, a lot of hours, but reaching that level is just super important. Um, and so, and, and, and for us, I mean, Labiotech, we're only running in English. Uh, we are speaking on English with the team. Uh, for the little story, we hired one person, or actually we, we had a policy to not hire too many French to keep the team very diverse, but we hired one, Maxime, actually was from, from Subbiotech. Uh, and the only criteria, or one of the only criteria about the language was I would never talk to him in French. Uh, and still up to today, I still have never talked to him in French, uh, and we talk only English. Uh, and it's just because it's it's just very important. And especially we see in the industry, it's very hard to not work in English in the, in the biotech industry. It's a very global industry. Um, and yeah, if you want an actionable item, I think, uh, as I get mentioned in the intro, that it's a mandatory to do at least six months in a uh, in a foreign country, which is, I think, really amazing. Um, but you can do more. You can do an internship, for example, abroad. Uh, you can, um, and even when you are abroad, don't stick only with, or don't stick with French people, uh, speak English. And I don't think you need to be necessarily in an English native country, even if you go, say, to Germany. Uh, if you, you are with Germans, you will speak English all the time. And just from practicing the English, it will already improve a lot. Um, and then the, the, the last part is about fun. Uh, I think overall, if I, if I look at, at Labiotech, I met amazing friends. Uh, actually, I met my, my co-founder at Labiotech was on the first day of, of uh, the first day of Labiotech. Uh, we were like entering the room and you know, you, you don't know where to sit. Uh, and at the end, there was, Joachim was sitting there, there was an empty chair next to him. Uh, I sat it and at the end we became, uh, the, was one of my best friends. Uh, we went to, to parties, went pretty crazy. Uh, as I got said, she, she remembered we went sometimes a bit too far, but you know, you, you learn also your lessons. Uh, and at the end we built a company and it was, it was a great, um, a great journey. I think the lesson here as well is really, uh, yeah, work-life balance matters, and it's it's really important. Uh, I think at school it's it's be, uh, at uni it's between not too much fun and, and working. Um, at Labiotech, I or in Boston, I had almost the opposite problem. I was trying to work too much and almost burning out. At the end, it's it's something that is very important, and you need to have fun in your work as well. When you when you pick up an internship, when you pick up a job, um, or even when you study. Um, and enjoy it and find find the fun in it. So and um, now after after Sabiotech, um, the quick on the on the story of Labiotech. So we Labiotech actually started doing doing Sabiotech. Uh, we were, uh, as I said, we were frustrated about about the industry, and it was end up basically in 2012. Uh, we were drinking a beer with Joachim, or maybe two or three, um, and we were both reading a lot and having basically the same frustration, both quite entrepreneurial, or at least, yeah, we were very entrepreneurial actually, um, and we started talking and said, oh, we could maybe launch a, w launch a website, and, and at the end that's what we did, uh, even though we, we had no idea first how to build a website, uh, how to do biotech journalism, we didn't even know really what was the biotech industry about. Um, but somehow uh, we tried it out, um, and so yeah, we, we we launched it. It was called labiotech.fr. Actually, that's where the, the, the name is still uh, still from, uh, and it worked quite well. Um, and then in the summer 2013, uh, we didn't know what to do on our holidays. Uh, Joachim, we are both big bike fans, um, and at the end we. Um, yeah, we, we wanted to do basically a bike trip, but we didn't really know what to do or for, for what. For more, we, we felt we, we needed to do it for a cause or something. And my, my girlfriend at the time, uh, which I'm very grateful for, she suggested us to do, why, why don't you combine the bike tour and the biotech? And that's what we did, actually. So we did a, 
uh, Tour de France de la biotech, it was called, and interviewed 26 CEOs from like top biotech companies like if you take a VC firm, Sofinova or Transgene or, or Innate Pharma, which is which is still amazing companies. Uh, and we arrived in short on our bike and interviewed the CEO and made a documentary movie. Um, and this worked also really well. And then this brings to uh, the end when I was doing my internship in Boston. Joachim was in, in Heidelberg, my end uh, of our internship. Uh, and we thought, okay, do we want to launch something out of it? Uh, it's a cool nonprofit project, a cool student project, but is it actually a real business project? Uh, at the end, we decided to, to do it. Um, there's not that many opportunities in life to, to start a business, and we thought, okay, let's do it. Uh, we don't have that much to lose, actually. Uh, so we started five days after graduate, literally like uh, last day of internship, flew to Paris, pick up some stuff. Uh, we went to Berlin, uh, and uh, we started a company for 18 months. Uh, we didn't, we didn't pay ourselves. Just surviving. We had uh, two interns in the team, uh, a small office, uh, and then we managed to to raise the first round of capital, and then building the team, building the platform, building the business. Um, and yeah, as I said, now it's it's really the largest digital media platform for the biotech industry in Europe. Uh, it's 200,000 readers a, a month, 10 full-time employees. And it's a profitable business, which is. Uh, which is which is which is amazing and uh, very grateful to, for the team for the amazing work they did uh, and for the team continuing to do amazing work and Joachim as well continuing to, to run the company uh, because I, I stepped down in in June 2019 mid 2019 um, I stepped down operationally so I'm still helping and on the board and still shareholder but operationally I'm not the I'm not uh, I'm not the CEO anymore and I took a, a long sabbatical or pause a bit more than a year. To kind of uh, enjoy life, uh, enjoy spending time with with my family, with my girlfriend, with with friends a bit all over the world, and travel a lot. Luckily, just be, before COVID, uh, do a lot of personal development and grow. And uh, the last part was then figured the next move. Um, and the next move, I I felt like I wanted to build something new from the ground up versus managing a, a profitable business. And two, I wanted something more closer to the biotech and deep tech biology uh, with a biotech product. Uh, so this, this, this led me actually to, uh, this led me to Molecular Partners uh, where, I'm, where I'm now, so entrepreneur, entrepreneur in residence. Um, so what I'm doing is basically I'm trying to build a company out of the platform technology that they have, the platform to engineer scaffold proteins uh, for, for developing drugs. And I'm trying to uh, take part of it, or at least specific programs, and put it into another company to raise money separately and with an independent entrepreneurial team and building a, basically a sister company out of it. ITA. Um, so yeah, and so that's that's what I'm doing. So on the actually on the, on the lesson, a takeaway lesson on on la biotech is is really listen to your gut feeling. Uh, if I look at it, there was, there was absolutely no reason to do it. Uh, launching a, a, a website when your student is like, that doesn't make that much sense. Launching a company when you're 20, 23 and you've never worked in your life doesn't make that much sense. Um, there's everything that is against it and there's so many chances of failure, but somehow, I don't know, it, it felt like it was the right thing to do. Um, and sometimes just don't listen too much to your rational brain trying to do positive, negative, more like, okay, go for it. And um, and down the road, sometimes it, it's really beneficial. Um, and for the for, for model care partners, of course, the, the big lesson is, is really about people, uh, about the, at the end business. Um, it's a bit like in, in real estate, you say location, location, location. In business, it's people, people, people. Uh, before everything else, and actually, I spent a lot of time evaluating the team I'm joining, and also I was evaluating co-founders and focusing mostly on the people. And I think it's it's uh, it's critical. Same at Labiotech, what what brought us there is, is really the the people and the team we hired. Uh, and so, an actionable advice for you is is really uh, I, I would recommend you to select your manager much more than the uh, company or than the role. Uh, because at the end, 
the fit you have with a person and the, what you can build over the long term will, will help you a lot. Um, so, yeah, so that brings me here. Uh, that's that's the story. Um, I think I hope it's I hope it's helpful. Uh, and again, as I said, happy to answer any kind of questions. Don't be shy. Uh, just ask them in the chat or in, in, in uh, or and uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Philippe. It was really interesting, and I have a lot of love. <laughs> <laughs>